What's the review? Oh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Lily Byer so she can share her experiences with the MacBook Pro 2016 13-inch, technically 13.3-inch, I've been told to uh, <laughs> specify, with Touch Bar, uh, which includes Touch ID, lit. <laughs> Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash so. 45. Alrighty, Lily, before we start talking about the MacBook that we're here to review, um, oh, by the way, uh, th <laughs> this is a perfect example of waiting way, way, way too long to do a review on a, <laughs> on a product because Apple has now come out with their 2018 versions of the MacBook Pro. Right on time. <laughs> yeah, so this one's being uh, labeled as a postmortem which is where we review a product that ha already has successors out. And so it's no longer like relevant technically, yeah. but I always, I always enjoy like the lessons that we learn from older, you know, like technology o older, <laughs> it's a 2016 laptop, <laughs> but you know, like, like, what what kinds of things can we look back on and figure out like, okay, this went really well, this w didn't. So, um, in a lot of ways, I think that postmortems are kind of more useful than like the reviews that come out three days after, you know, a phone comes out kind of thing. That's fair, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so before we talk about, start talking about this specific laptop, uh, I would like to know what is your personal history with like laptops, with computers? What have you had before you had this computer? Uh, this is my first ever personal one because okay. i mean i didn't really need one before going to college but um in my family we had like the classic huge tan one <laughs> like like a laptop no 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 like desktop computer. okay okay yeah 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 do you only want to know about laptops um i i mean i think that would be the most relevant okay but yeah, because I mean, my dad always had one for work, but he's never had a Mac, actually. The first experience I had with Mac was my sister getting one mm -hmm. um, early in her college days, which I was pretty young at the time. But um, yeah, she's usually had either a Dell or an Apple, and um, she really likes the MacBook Air, and she has the same one now. So Okay. But that's about it. The, the same MacBook Pro that we're talking about today? She has the same MacBook Air. She just like oh. upgraded. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So were were you primarily on Windows before this or Mac? Windows. Okay. Cool. So that's something that we can talk about when we get down to the software section as well. Um. All right. So for this uh this laptop which came out in late 2016, I think it was. It was announced in 2016 uh, and yeah. then it released June 2017. Okay. They didn't actually have the physical models. Okay. Until mid 2017. Because I was also seeing that like one of the because they've got the 13 inch without touch bar, they've got the 13 inch with touch bar, and then they've got the 15 inch. And like I think the one without touch bar launched first in like October 2016, and then there was one that was like November of 2016. Yeah. And it's yeah. a mess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then yeah, they also had after that they had like the 2017 mid year refresh like spec bump <gasps> or something like mm -hmm. that yeah um which is very different than like the 2018 refresh that they did which, where they also changed some of the physical stuff with like the keyboard and the um the true tone screen yeah. is is new in the 2018 ones yeah yeah um but so i'm seeing here in the notes that we wrote that the this laptop came out at like eighteen hundred dollars was the base price for the yeah for the brand new ones mm -hmm. um but i got it august 2017 so i got it refurbished because you know same quality five hundred dollars cheaper you're much more brave than i am <laughs> <laughs> you don't like refurbished i i stay away from refurbished ones it's yeah my favorite thing. <laughs> i'm always nervous and I, I apple refurbished ones are probably you know gonna be okay yeah but i've had i've had like other like refurbished laptops from other brands where like it was just like or like refurbished uh headsets you know where i was like oh i can see where they glued this back together and it's really shoddy work Oosh. yeah that's not good <laughs> yeah no um but if it's a refurbished that came straight from apple i'm 
I'm pretty yeah. sure they do a good job with it. I yeah. think. The display, let's talk about that first. So, um, the 13.3 inch display, uh, retina display, of course. I don't think that they've come out with a MacBook Pro that didn't have a retina display in a very long time. Yeah, I d- no. Yeah. Unlike, <laughs> as it turns out, the MacBook Airs, <laughs> where they don't have <laughs> retina displays. <laughs> Um, yeah, tell me about, how does this thing look? Um, I think it's really beautiful. I wrote down, I basically make, (laughs) um, the hard eyes emoji when I look at everything on it. Um, the colors are really vivid, um, not oversaturated, anything like that. Um, it doesn't feel extreme. I use dark mode on YouTube a lot because Mm. I'm on YouTube a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Um, the brightness goes up really high and obviously really low. Yeah. The biggest... The weirdest thing I noticed is, like, when you go from charging to not charging, the brightness... When you just unplug the cable? Yeah. Yeah. The brightness goes down about halfway. Mm. It doesn't even adjust a couple notches. It's, like, half of the gauge of whatever you had it before. Interesting. I bet that's probably a setting that you can go and fiddle around with, like, how much you want it to change, but, uh... Yeah. mm, Yeah. I would expect... But yeah, I agree. Like, I we've got a MacBook Air sitting here and the MacBook Pro next to each other, and <laughs> yeah, the the colors just look washed out on the MacBook Air screen yeah. uh, in comparison. It looks like a um, what's your pebble? The paper? Yeah, the the Pebble Time watch. Mm-hmm. That that's what the MacBook Air looks like. That's okay. what it looks like to <laughs> okay. me when comparing to the MacBook Pro. <laughs> Uh, zing. <laughs> Not that I don't love my Pebble. My Pebble has uh, an impressive screen for the type that it is, because it's an e-ink display. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. e-ink. Okay. Um, if we want to get technical, the uh, the screen resolution on the MacBook Pro is 2560 by 1600, which is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, uh, and it's at uh, 227 pixels per square inch, which is pretty fantastic Mm -hmm. uh especially when i think about like the fact that um so i have a 27 inch monitor uh for my desktop at home and that has a 2560 by 1440 uh resolution so we have a display that is literally four times as big as your laptop's display at basically the same resolution (laughs) yep (laughs) yep and um yeah, it's a good thing that I sit farther away from my desktop than you usually sit oh, yeah. from your laptop. Yeah, yep, yep. Otherwise, you'd just be disappointed every time you looked oh, at it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would not. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing that I'm fairly picky about is like screen resolutions. Mm-hmm. And yeah, um, I guess so. So this is, a, I think it's an LED display, right? Yeah. Um, does it's not an like an AMOLED display though, where like no. the where the black like if it's displaying black, it literally doesn't, doesn't light, light up. up. Okay, it's not like that. Okay, um, they'll probably come out with that eventually in laptops, but for now, that's uh, much more common on on phones. Shall we move on to physicals and specs? Sure. All right, let's talk about the build quality. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, how how does like. I mean... It feels sturdy. Yeah. I've nicked it, and it does not show it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah fa- Apple is famous for their aluminum unibody mm-hmm. design. Um, I think it's probably the best-looking, like, design on, in a laptop ever. Um, it's really beautiful. Yeah. I I do wonder if... Because um, I've, I've had before where, where I had a, an old Dell laptop, and I accidentally knocked it against somebody's MacBook, and the MacBook came away with a dent because it's soft aluminum, you yeah. know? And the, and the hard plastic on the Dell, which doesn't look pretty, <laughs> just did not have any dents in it. Um, and I don't think that that's a, like a, um, something that Apple can just solve uh, like without just getting rid of the whole aluminum yeah, thing. Yeah, and I don't think they would do that. No. But yeah, they don't have any reason to. People love it. Yeah. Um, and it helps with, you know, passive cooling, so mm-hmm. that's a good thing. Um, one thing that I noticed when I moved from the uh, 2013 MacBook Pro to the MacBook Air is that the... <laughs> like, the fact that the MacBook Air tapers down a lot towards the trackpad, right, uh helps a lot when you're like typing for a long time on the laptop when it's sitting on a especially when it's sitting like on a desk um because my macbook pro like bit into my wrists a lot when they were resting there um this macbook pro 
is a lot is is like noticeably thinner than the 2013 versions so do, has that been like a problem have you found i mean not that i've noticeably noticeably been like every time i use my laptop oh it's biting my wrist so mm-hmm. i don't know um usually when i'm typing i just keep my hands far far up the keyboard and then mm. don't have to worry about it but um yeah and i noticed that the trackpad yeah. here is a lot bigger so it's I, so huge <laughs> i wonder i wonder if like the the obvious way that it's bigger is it's a lot wider yeah but i wonder did they leave us more room below the keyboard you know before the so. edge of the so laptop you have, like more hand resting mm-hmm. space yeah because yeah. i've noticed i can easily just chill out there without having to go down to a desk mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> on my old sony laptop it had like this weird kind of um like it was it was like this weird pattern of little like raised squares on that area where you rest your your palms while you're typing right i feel like i've seen that before and it would collect like lots of sweat and grime and gross stuff yeah that was bad it's a poor design uh, yeah um <laughs> On on a on a Apple Unibody laptop, you know, you, you do sometimes get that kind of you know sweat crust around where your palm was, but like it's easy to wipe off because it's just you know it's just, a flat yeah. piece of aluminum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No. Why are you sweating so much when you type? I you know, that's just me. <laughs> just I stress the whole time. <laughs> I guess also. It might just be that I'm like a delicate flower, you know, the wrist biting situation. So <laughs> it's just a laptop, man. Um, one of the changes that they did make uh, in this new MacBook Pro physical design is that the the logo on the back doesn't light up anymore. I was upset about that. You were okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I grew up like watching um, my sisters like light up every time she turned it on. I was mm-hmm. like, That's so cool and then you know they came out with the new ones obviously i wanted the new ones when i was looking for one but then they don't have the background yeah the apple logo light up it's just a silver is that underneath the aluminum yeah and they're just like have it's a like cutout kind of inserted in it. there yeah yeah, yep. yeah but yeah i kind of missed that when they came out with the new ones i was like oh I, that was my childhood watching that logo light up yeah <laughs> but yeah. all right <laughs> and um I mean, I guess it does make it easier to do fun stuff with stickers on your laptop because, like, when I first got uh, a die cut Nexus logo sticker, right? I just I tried to put it straight on the Apple logo, and it just bleeds right through yeah. when it's a when it's a light up logo. Um, the shiny one doesn't do that, so I guess, yeah. yeah. So you can like put stickers wherever you want. Um, so that's kind of a. I mean, it's a purely aesthetic thing yeah. and you know i guess it is what it yeah, is yeah because it's not like the light up takes enormous amounts of battery no or no like that. I, I would expect that apple wouldn't put it in there if if it had mm-hmm. yeah uh all right let's talk about some uh tech specs so um the range of processors that they had available for this line of macbook pros was uh 2.9 gigahertz to 3.6 gigahertz um, and you could either have an i5 or an i7, um, and these were from the Skylake uh, generation of Intel processors. Um, you had the choice of 8 gigs or 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM, um, which I found rather interesting because, like, these came out in 2016, so, like, we were well into the transition into DDR4. Yeah. Yeah. And, I like, I feel like Apple is... Like, I would expect Apple to be the ones to kind of lead the charge on that kind of thing. That's true. Yeah. But, um... I didn't look too closely at that art, but... Yeah. Um, and then you had the option of uh, anywhere from 256 gigabytes to a one terabyte uh, SSD in there. I'm so glad that Apple doesn't sell any laptops that have spinning hard drives. (laughs) (laughs) Because it's 2018, and that would be disgusting. They do still have a 128 gigabyte one. Yeah, that's also disgusting. <laughs> oh, what if I had one right here? <laughs> this MacBook Air has 128 gigs of storage space, and it kills me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do you uh, do you know off the top of your head like what the configuration of this specific one is? Oh, um... Okay, yeah, so we've got the 2.9 gigahertz i5... Um, 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of SSD storage. So it looks mm-hmm. like we've got the the 
lowest tier on each of those. Yeah, yeah. for the 13.3 inch. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so how have you found that uh, performance-wise? I haven't had any noticeable problems. Okay. I mean, the biggest thing I run into is just Wi-Fi being slow, and that has nothing to do with yeah, the computer no. itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, you wrote here that you have, you've had two tiny issues oh uh, yeah yeah what, can you unpack those for okay. us <laughs> so the one is just um so on the touch bar you can adjust like the brightness and the um volume, volume and... with like the mm -hmm. hold and slide gesture mm -hmm. and then there have been times where i'll be holding and sliding and it just gets stuck like um on the bar for a while mm -hmm. maybe 30 seconds to a minute jeez that's but, a long time well Okay, maybe up to 30 seconds. I don't mm -hmm. really keep track. It's pretty short. But um, yeah, it just kind of gets stuck there and then I'll do a few things and it'll go back. And then the only other issue I've had might not be the computer. It might be. But I have Bluetooth headphones and Bluetooth earbuds. Mm -hmm. My headphones connect fine and they pair pretty much automatically now. And then the earbuds I've had for like a month or two and I've tried several times to pair them to the MacBook and they just won't okay connect like mm. even when it's searching they don't come up in options they don't come up anywhere and do they do they work with like the, the yeah phone? the phone okay is automatic hmm. yeah um yeah i mean that's probably not related to the tech specs exactly that's probably just some so. some weird software uh you know yeah perfectly aligned stars to you know <laughs> screw you over on the bluetooth <laughs> yeah because i've been like trying to figure it out and it just sits there and spins yeah yeah, but, yeah. yeah. i so for the touch bar issue, um, do, am, am I right in remembering that, like, they have a second, like, smaller processor in the computer that just runs the touch bar stuff? Or is that different? I think I might be thinking of them, like, they're, they're pushed to get iOS software onto Mac OS and something about the secure enclave, maybe. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I don't I wouldn't think it's separate. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure. How about that battery life? <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I've noticed I can basically if I'm on it all day, I can basically go a full day mm. doing several different things um without having to charge up and then obviously you get the warning of like 20%, 10%. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I mean there have been times when it's been running either streaming Twitch or YouTube or Netflix or something similar for anywhere from six to ten hours and essentially don't have to charge until the end. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and your your main browser is Chrome, right? Yeah. Um, which uh, several of my, you know, Apple friends would yell at, you know, for like, oh, that's going to drain your battery so much okay, more than Safari. Okay, Safari sucks Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, throwing shade. Um, yeah, so I guess for both for both the uh, performance and for the battery, um, what is like the most intense thing that you make this computer do on a regular basis? I don't... What's a good gauge? What's intense for a computer? Uh, I mean, like... <laughs> rendering video or audio um or do yeah you don't do those um so this is this, is this mostly I like mean... a, what is this is like mostly a consumption a device bleed. right yeah okay and yeah. Not, not like a production device no okay um so like fairly fairly light stuff on the mm -hmm. whole yeah i mean we can try some stuff if i'm, I'm sure it would yeah i i'm not really married to the idea of like putting it through a a series um, of tests yeah the, what, what, do, what do you call those benchmarks and stuff mm -hmm. yeah um i did notice that uh when, when we installed audacity on there um i noticed that all of your programs that you have installed on this thing fit on one page of you know the uh yes <laughs> and like you know it's 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 a very different world from my um uh computer that i got from the school well, district which like tweet 50 times which, a day no it's it's you know the, it can't like the district pre-installed a whole lot of stuff on here so like before i even installed anything you else have all the microsoft yeah stuff. i have all the microsoft stuff i've got 
Um, and mind you, the Microsoft stuff doesn't just include like Word and Excel. <laughs> you have it Firefox. Also, it also has Skype, and it's got OneDrive, and yeah, there's a lot of a lot of doodads on here. Hmm. No, yeah, the only thing I really installed was Spotify. Okay. Yeah. So battery kind of transitions nicely into ports because mm-hmm. that's one thing that they changed. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> So no longer is MagSafe the uh, the charging situation. Now you charge via USB C. Yeah. And you do a lot of other things via USB C on this computer too, right? <laughs> so many. So many. <laughs> um, no, yeah, it only has the Thunderbolt threes and then the headphone jack, but. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah. you've got the Touch Bar model, which means that you've got four Thunderbolts, mm-hmm. uh, aka USB C ports yeah um i did i I wasn't entertained by the fact that you wrote down it only has thunderbolt threes and it got me thinking like man is it a good thing that apple didn't put a usb-c port on there that wasn't thunderbolt enabled that would have been so difficult (laughs) yeah because then like (laughs) then the users would have had to keep track of like which ones are thunderbolt because they look exactly exactly yep yeah oh that would have been terrible (laughs) But yeah, I mean, I don't really download a lot of stuff from outside sources, um, and I have the A to C adapter, so yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I used to plug my phone in, and that's about it. And um, yeah, that's I understand like why Apple is moving into USB C. You know, it it does allow them to like make the laptop a lot thinner than they were before. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Yeah, but, like, there are some things that I don't think they needed to get rid of. Like, you know, SD card slots are pretty thin. They're, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're thinner than a a USB-C. And, like, I understand that a lot of users don't use SD card slots anymore. But this is, you know, like, marketed as a pro device, right? And I think that, like, the crowd of pro users are going to be more likely to use sd cards That's right very true. um same with like you know it, it, it just it feels like silly to me to have to have an adapter to plug your typical like computer peripheral which almost certainly uses a usb type a port yeah into this computer um so like i feel like having maybe two usb c ports and then, like, one USB-A and maybe an SD card, right? I think that would have been a good middle step here as we're transitioning into USB-C, but not, like, forcing everybody to get adapters and dongles and everything in order to do anything. I guess. I mean, yeah. it's just, like, you know, getting rid of the headphone jack on the new iPhones. Yeah, that Everybody's was... all mad about that, I'm... which I understand. I'm very mad about it, too, because it... it... <laughs> pushed google into doing the same thing and so i'm screwed over because i have the pixel <laughs> yeah but yeah i guess the only thing with having a USB A would be that that one is so much thicker than all the other ones yeah yeah and i don't because i mean like the, the macbook air here has two USB A ports um and it's a very it's still a very thin laptop you know mm-hmm. i f- i feel like they could have fit them in there but I'm not an engineer, so. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no, definitely not a hardware engineer, that's, that's for sure. Mm. But yeah, I was sad about not having um, the, what is it, the MagSafe, where you like, if you trip over it, it mm-hmm. falls out instead mm-hmm. of coming unplugged. I trip a lot, so. I do, <laughs> I, I do really like the fact that it charges via USB-C because it's another piece of the puzzle in my dream to have a world where we just need one cord, one For thing to, yeah, to charge everything that you take with you. Um, yeah. And so here's my rant about Apple and their iPhones. And um, they had a perfect opportunity to like really jump into USB-C by having all of their laptops charging via USB-C. And they could have gotten rid of the headphone jack like they wanted to. And switched all of their phones over to USB-C at the same time. And then, like, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be living in this world where, like, if you're a, if you're a hardcore Apple fan, right, you buy the latest iPhone, you buy the latest laptop, the latest MacBook Pro, 
and your and your phone can't plug into your MacBook Pro unless you get an adapter or the or, or the cord. Yeah, that was thirty dollars. Exactly. So it's like it's like what like what kind of weird fragmented um, strategy is this? You know. Um, I don't think they have a strategy. No, it's ugh. and it's and, and it's like it's too late now to switch the iPhones over to <laughs> USB C because now that they've gotten rid of the headphone jack, right? All of their adapters they've been selling, you know, these these corded headphones mm-hmm. that end in a lightning cable, or they've been, you know, they've got all these adapters out there that go lightning to headphone, headphone. yeah, and like you, like that's that's a bunch of infrastructure essentially that you know they don't want to abandon yeah (laughs) yeah i'm not sure with the new models coming out in the fall what they'll do yeah no uh i haven't been keeping up with the rumors for those super (laughs) macbook rumors the oh you're talking about macbooks i thought we were talking about phones i misspoke okay (laughs) (laughs) iphone rumors yeah yeah so how is uh how, how is charging on this thing it's really fast um yeah i mean Obviously, since it's a larger battery, it's going to take a significant amount of time, but mm-hmm. anywhere... Oh, by the way, the battery is uh, 49.2 watt hours, which is not a unit of measurement that is helpful to me, because <laughs> I- I'm used to looking at like phones and you know external batteries, which are all measured in milliamp hours, mm-hmm. and if you want to convert from watt hours to milliamp hours, you need to know what the voltage is that the battery operates at, oh. and I don't know. You don't know? They don't tell us. I looked all over the place. They don't no. tell you on any of the pages, like, what the voltage is. So well. I, Yeah. <laughs> Watt hours. That's all you get. Yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's really fast. I haven't uh, timed it or anything, but from almost dying to fully charged, I'd say two, two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. Maybe three, but that's if it's really low. And I am... Um... I'm really happy that it supports USB-C power de- power delivery um, because, like, that allows you to get accessories that will, like, charge a phone really fast, and it'll also charge the laptop really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, like, we took my 20,000 milliamp hour external battery that I recently got and plugged it into this laptop and, you know, kind of timed it. It wasn't quite as fast as having it plugged directly into the wall. Yeah. Um. But it was like, it was a good pace. Yeah. It wasn't extreme. It wasn't like eight hours. I think it was four, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And um. And you know, I I think that that's a perfectly reasonable like trade off if you're out and about using and you a just portable got... battery to yeah. charge a whole laptop. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Second opinion is supported only by listeners like you who voluntarily donate on our Patreon. Money we make through Patreon will go towards buying products to review and improving the quality of the show. Our content has always been released for free, and always will be, but if you want to go that extra mile, you can get cool rewards like access to The Fringe, our behind-the-scenes after show, access to polls to help us choose future products to review, access to show docs as we're working on them, Nexus stickers, and your name shouted out right here on the show. Not to mention, you will have my eternal gratitude. So if you're interested in helping us take this to the next level, join us at patreon.com slash thenexustv. Again, that's patreon.com slash thenexustv. Um, all right, here's, uh, in addition to the ports, <laughs> uh, another point of contention for the... the point of contention. New- yeah, well, you know... The- the keyboard and the trackpad here, especially yeah, the keyboard. Yeah. This is, I think, the most polarizing keyboard that I have ever heard of. So I feel like you don't like it. Yeah, yeah you'd be right. <laughs> <laughs> but I also haven't spent, you know, a lot of time using it. So how do you like the butterfly keys? Or the butterfly switches, sorry. Um, I like it a lot. Obviously, it doesn't feel... As traditional as like any other laptop that mm-hmm. I've typed on, but um, you that's, know, that's oh man, that's a loaded word. Traditional. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want me to say? I mean, it, it sounds like you're saying just like uh the old way without actually like. This you is know. a millennial laptop. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, um, 
it's really nice and light. It doesn't feel like I have to be pounding the keys, mm-hmm. which, you know, obviously in the past five years, you haven't really had to pound keys that much. No. Especially in MacBooks, but um, yeah, you don't have to put all the pressure of for social interaction into a finger to get a letter to show up or anything you know yep it's super chill (laughs) so relaxed i think that's our headline tag here (laughs) the the force of forced social interactions yeah oh yeah um but yeah you commented once that I think it doesn't make like a an actual keyboard sound, but yeah, it um well it sounds a lot louder actually than like the the keyboard mm-hmm. that I have on the the MacBook yeah. Air. Yours is yours is designed to be muted. I'm pretty sure. Probably. And then this one is just designed to be more easily like less travel. Yeah. Yeah, much shallower. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's a it's a in her laptop Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh la la. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i um I, th- I think i talked about this when we reviewed the macbook air um a couple months ago but like the the the, the keyboards that apple has in the uh older macbook pros and in this macbook air are among my favorites for for laptops. Um, Sony Vio laptop also had a really really nice one. Um, and these butterfly keys, uh, from the little that I've used them, I think I like them less than the the traditional ones. Um, but I like it a lot more than a lot of other laptop keyboards that I've used, you know? Yeah. Um, a lot of them are very mushy. They don't... Sticky. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm really glad that they still have, you know, a little like a, a chiclet-style keyboard, right, where you've got the keys separate from each other. Um, yeah, I hate the ones that are connected, because then it just... Mm-hmm. It, yeah, yeah, where all... they all just run up on each other, mm-hmm. um, and they're designed to look like a... Uh, like a desktop keyboard almost. Yeah. yeah. It's nasty. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's one of those things that like, um, when, you know, whenever I'm looking at, at, at laptops online, you know, you can talk about the tech specs and everything all you want, but like, unless you actually get your hands on the thing and like try out the keyboard and trackpad and everything, you're not going to know how well you like it day to day. Um, and so I would I, I would think that like since this keyboard has not been as universally praised as the ones in the past, uh, and it and it, you know it really comes down to personal taste, I would recommend that people actually try out you know the butterfly keyboard before they actually yeah. decide whether or not they want to buy a laptop that has the butterfly keyboard. Definitely, because it's a it's a different experience for yeah. sure. Another important thing to note about this keyboard is uh, there were lots and lots and lots of reports of the keyboard, you know, keys like failing on it, um, supposedly because of like dust getting in there. And um, Apple avoided admitting any fault for a really long time. Um, Eventually, earlier this year, they announced a repair program for for laptops uh, in this era. that uh, I don't remember how much it costs or if it was free or what, but you know they they have like a, a keyboard specific repair program, um, and also on the new 2018 MacBook Pros, uh, they modified the the butterfly switches a little bit. Um, it's not going to you know quell the the naysayers regarding the le- you know sh- shallower travel, sure. um, but it it is like <clears throat> less sticky. Or, sorry, less clicky, um, so it makes less noise. Um, mm-hmm. And also, apparently, like, the membrane that they added in there is meant to help keep dust out. So hopefully the 2018 oh. ones have a lower failure rate yeah. than the 2016 and 17 ones. I mean, I haven't really had any issues with it getting right. particularly sticky or anything. Yeah, and I... Um, but I also clean it because I love it, so... The- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the only other person who I've seen who had a MacBook from this era that had trouble, I think her, like, she literally did not have the space bar anymore. What? Like, it was ripped off or something, and I don't know what went, what went wrong, went, bleh. That's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Should we talk about the touch bar? That's related to the keyboard, and it's, and it's a new thing. Sure. 
It's exciting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of the crazier ideas that Apple has had in recent times. Yeah. Um, in terms of like, well, I was going to say it's, they're not taking anything away from us, but no, they literally are taking an entire row of keys away from us, aren't they? <laughs> they're adding new ones All right. Too. Tell, tell me about it. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think it's really intuitive for the most part. Um, I don't use it quite as much as I expected to. Um, I was like, ooh, I'll be scrolling through all the things and using it every time I open something. But I mean, I'm on Chrome most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's using the new tab button or the refresh button if my mouse isn't already closer to the top of the screen. Mm -hmm. But um, most of the time it's for volume and brightness adjustment. Um, So when... Yeah. So I know that the touch bar like changes what functions it it surfaces there based on which application you're currently in Mm -hmm. right um are the volume controls and the brightness controls always pinned there over on the right hand side or does it change i think they're almost always there yeah and then you can like um expand them or keep them in that little section Mm -hmm. right next to the siri toggle Mm -hmm. um yeah and then if you like open up either Spotify controls or like something different that'll take over the whole touch bar, but then Mm -hmm. you can just go back to the brightness and volume and things like that. Yeah. And I noticed when you expand that out, uh, you get some very familiar looking controls there. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all of the ones that I have on my function row on the Mm -hmm. MacBook air. Um, yeah. So one of the things with the physical keys on the MacBook air is the, you know, if I hold down the function key down here in the corner, and press one of those, then it does F1, F2, F3, etc. Um, which I feel like that like that comes up a lot less often in Mac OS than it does in Windows. Oh, yeah. Um, but do you know how to do that on a touch bar? Let's find out. Oh! oh you just press... Oh, you okay. just... Okay, so we just hold down the function key in the corner, and then, and then the then... pictures that are in the touch bar change from... Our volume control, playback control, etc., to the function keys. To okay. F1 through 12. Yep. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. And you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, uh, that does appear, the touch bar does appear to be an AMOLED display because the yeah. black areas in between the controls looks very black. Mm. I, it doesn't look like there's any backlighting at all. Yeah, I think that definitely is. Yeah. But, um,. Yeah, it's fun to, like, uh, scroll through the emojis when you're messaging and stuff like that. Ah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that sounds um, like a much better solution for for putting in emojis than any other that exists on a desktop currently, you know? Yeah. Because, like, on a phone, it's very easy. You've got your keyboard Keyboard. is on the screen already, so you just switch from, you know, having a bunch of letters to scrolling through your emojis but even Um, on here you have to do if you're typing emoji mm -hmm. um let's see you have to click on the icon and then click on one at a time and then it shows up instead of just Mm -hmm. doing this and this ah yeah yeah yeah. where you can type multiple at a time and just go ham to reiterate for for the listening audience (laughs) (laughs) um what just happened is when when you're using the mouse to select emoji from a menu the menu goes away after you click on the the emoji whereas if you are selecting emoji via the touch bar that menu stays there and you can select multiple emoji Mm -hmm. in a row um much faster yeah yeah um the trade-off i suppose is that the touch bar can't show as many emoji as you know an on-screen grid But, I mean, you just, like, swipe it over. And then yeah. you can also search, I think. Oh, no. It does have the categories separated, though. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Like, but, yeah, you can't have a whole grid. With the, uh, yeah, and, and with the number of emojis that exist nowadays, um, <laughs> there's a lot of them. What happens if you long press on them? Can you choose, like, different skin tones and stuff? Oh, you can. Hey, look mm-hmm. at that. <laughs> Learn, yep. I'm learning new things every day. <laughs> you should definitely just send that. Hi. <laughs> no, that's like a conversation I don't want to ruin. Um, all right. How about the trackpad? Um, it's really large, like you said, like mm-hmm. definitely bigger in proportion to the laptop than any yeah. other I've used. 
but it's nice. Um, the only thing that happens is sometimes when I'm typing, I'll accidentally click something just mm-hmm. because it's covers such a large surface area. How often does that happen? Mm-hmm. I don't like often enough for you to be like, Oh, I did it again. Or no, it's not that often. It's just when it, maybe if I'm typing something really quickly or stuff like that. Okay. Or for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Let's say average like once every two weeks. Okay. <laughs> Is that a good? Yeah. Good gauge. That, that, okay. that, yeah, that gives me a good idea. It's not. It's not that bad. <laughs> the other thing that I have, uh, of course, noticed about this is that it does not actually click. It it has <laughs> like a little little haptic feedback engine. I'm sure is what Apple calls it. That makes it feel like it's clicking, and then. I think the speakers make like a clicking noise. It's definitely not as clicky as this. <laughs> well, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a very different click feeling and noise. It it definitely is a different enough noise that whenever I hear it from across the room, I'm like, man, it sounds so weird. <laughs> <What is that? laughs> but yeah, with the touch bar and everything. Um, oh yeah, the touch ID is really, really nice. Oh yeah, I forgot mm-hmm. to mention that. Yeah, because it's, I mean, if you're, like, getting something in the App Store or iTunes, you can literally mm-hmm. use, you know, your ID to confirm your Apple ID or Apple Pay or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Or even, um, I think there are shortcuts where you can, um, I don't know. I but, did... um, yeah, it's nice to log into when it's on sleep and just open it up and press mm-hmm. your finger on an area instead of typing in a whole password. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did think it was really funny when... Uh, we had Aaron on last fall to review the iPhone 10. And he, when we were talking about Face ID, he said like, oh yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to buy an Apple product that has uh, Touch ID ever again because like Face ID is the future. And and it got me thinking like, okay, they just launched touch the laptop. on the MacBooks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For the very first time, they have Touch <clears throat> ID on the laptop. So I was like, is that going to go away? Or are they going to bring face id into the next one they already have the webcam yeah. I don't... <laughs> well i don't know if i would use that webcam for no, it yeah. it's, a, <laughs> it's a 720p that's bad yeah um on the other hand like I, I feel like who uses their laptop computer yeah the only thing that i would ever use a laptop webcam for is like video calls every once in a while and that's it you know yep it's it's not like a, a hybrid laptop that can flip all the way around and become a tablet you know and then you can use it to like take some actual photos yeah. of the world um in that case you might want a decent camera but yeah for for a traditional laptop form factor i don't think you need a gray traditional. one <laughs> traditional yes there it is again oh <laughs> uh, that's that's our tagline for this episode i guess okay a less traditional laptop <laughs> yeah um how heavy is it um, I mean, it's heavy enough to be noticeable, mm-hmm. but I mean, I remember five years ago when people were carrying around laptops and they're like, this is the bulk of my bag, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, so it's 3.2 pounds, I think, which is not a lot, you know, it's less than the tiny dogs that people carry around. <laughs> <laughs> and tiny dogs, boy, they have way fewer features. And they really do. They're more annoying usually too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's obviously heavier, heavier than yours or any MacBook Air right, models. Right, the MacBook Air. Because yeah. the point of the Air is to be light as air. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, with all of the higher performance features, then it makes up for it. I I assume that it is like noticeably lighter than the older MacBook Pros. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But of course, I don't have one here with me to compare. <laughs> Get on that, Ian. Yeah. Well, I had to give it back. The, the school district is getting rid of them. Mm-hmm. Um, speakers. You want to talk about speakers a lot. <gasps> They're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the first thing I did um, when I got this in the mail was started playing music on it. And I just <laughs> freaked out. I don't know. They're really... I think the only... The speakers are only in a f- couple areas throughout the entire grill. And the rest of it is just 
to make it look like there's speakers there. Yeah, yeah. I was but, reading, um, uh, read an article that the the grills that you see on the top of this thing on either side of the laptop or the keyboard are actually just mostly cosmetic, mm-hmm. and the sound almost all comes through the side grills of the laptop. Yeah. Um, but it still it still sounds noticeably the sound is better. Really nice. Than the older macbook pros where they where the sound was coming through like the grills that were slightly on the bottom of the Mm -hmm. body yeah or even when they're up here at the top it's Mm -hmm. better on the side um it just creates like a more surround sound effect i think and yeah stereo stuff is more split more noticeably split yeah um but yeah um i think the first thing i listened to on this was lord's newest album okay um and I was freaking out about that because it sounded so good. <clears throat> but yeah, I've never had any issues with the speakers. Everything is always clear. Yeah, you can't like accidentally cover them up and not be able to hear anything right, easily. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Shall we talk about software? Sure. <laughs> software. Yes. So, so coming from primarily using <clears throat> Windows when you were a kid and now yeah. you've got a Mac OS uh, laptop um how are you how are you liking it i mean it was easy to adjust since mm-hmm. i'd had you know i had the iphone success and i got that when it came out two and a half years ago um and then before that i'd had the ipod so does that translate significantly into familiarity with mac os i mean i feel like it does okay I, obviously it's not the same yeah because it's a computer versus a phone mm-hmm. but you have like sort of all the same functions and then a little more with a laptop Mm -hmm. um i don't know and it's like a familiar aesthetic and everything that's very true but um yeah i mean growing up on windows was fine and then um as previously stated you know i kept seeing other people using macbook airs and macbook pros Mm -hmm. and um borrowing those seeing what those were like but yeah yep and from like a feature standpoint of course um Mac OS and Windows, for the most part, everything that you want to use is going to be available on both. Um, the few exceptions being, like, you know, gaming. There's going to be a lot more games available on Windows than on Mac. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, other than that, if if uh, a developer is making a product, a service, and they make it available on one of the, uh, you know, on either Windows or, or Mac and not on the other, uh, they're insane. Yeah, <laughs> and they're doing something wrong, um, or they are Apple themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Only on Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, you know, you can always just dual boot Windows or Linux if you prefer. Uh, get the uh, the premium hardware with a you know, and and do whatever you want with the software. So that's a thing. Yeah, I I figured. I'm just not that kind of person. No, yeah, and and that um is a thing in our current era where we've got Apple laptops that are running on Intel architecture. Um, there have been rumors that Apple is working on their own chipset, so who knows what kind of like um, driver support there will be for that on the Windows side. And yeah, future is uh, kind of scary in some ways. That should be the clip you do. <laughs> 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 yeah um updates for the software you wrote down here it certainly updates faster than my 6s yeah um what do you mean by that not that the updates come to the device faster but that if you know just like rebooting it yeah is faster okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah just in general you know if i tap you know update software on my 6s versus the macbook pro mm-hmm. it's gonna take twice as long or more on my phone Mm -hmm. um yeah but i haven't run into any issues or any like major changes that have caused problems Mm -hmm. yeah and apple uh has a fantastic track record of you know coming out with updates for their hardware and supporting laptops um for a very very long time throughout their lives yeah um so like even on the you know 2013 macbook pro if uh if it wasn't managed by the school district i totally could have had the latest version of mac os on it i'm not salty at all thank you very much (laughs) it's just about to say you sound really (laughs) bitter about that (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that I, I don't <clears throat> think there's any uh, any complaints on the software side of things. What's the review? Oh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Got any uh, final thoughts for us? Um, I want a sticker. You want a Nexus sticker <laughs> yeah. for being on the show? For sure. And you know what? I was like, oh, I should bring one over for her. And then I forgot. So I'll have to bring one over some other time. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops. The uh, the classic line is, of course, what if I had one right here? But I failed. I don't have one. <laughs> Failure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really confused by like Apple's whole laptop lineup right now. Um, cause like, it's, yeah, it's jumbled. Yeah. And, and there, there's none of the models seem to have like 100% everything better than any others. You know, you get trade-offs with all of them. The MacBook Pros, you don't get all of the ports you might want. If you get the MacBook Air, which has, you know, like a lot of the traditional ports that you would want, <laughs> you don't you don't get USB-C charging. Or you also a... don't get a good screen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's kind of a... There's just a bunch of trade-offs. Maybe and, it's and the 2018 even... model is... Maybe, you know. but it, it, it still doesn't have the ports that I might want, mm-hmm. you know? Um and what even is the Retina MacBook? You know, the thin one that isn't the MacBook Air that has only oh, one yeah. USB-C port, but has a Retina display, but has a really crappy, like, Core M processor or whatever in it. <laughs> oh, man. And, yeah, I mean, since I'm not somebody who's, like, married to Mac OS, I, w- I probably would be looking at other laptops to buy. You know, back in like 2013, MacBook Pro was probably the best laptop to buy hands down. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I could install Windows on it if I wanted to. But like in 2018, I almost feel like I... There are so many more options. Yeah, like I personally probably wouldn't be looking at a MacBook. If you do need Mac OS, of course, then like a MacBook is what you're going to be looking at. That's, you know, you don't have any choice. Nah, get a Dell and Dell yeah. Mac OS. <laughs> so I do have, like Brian has done a Hackintosh on a desktop build. I don't know how feasible that would be on a laptop. I've never looked into that kind of thing. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Um... Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion, everybody. Um, This has been a production of The Nexus TV. You can find us uh, online at thenexus.tv. If you want to see show notes for this episode, again, you can go to thenexus.tv slash SO45. If you would like to uh, get in contact with us, you can find us on Twitter at The Nexus TV or email us at thenexustv at gmail.com. Lily, where can people find you on the internet if they have other questions? Um, uh, my Twitter and Instagram are the same, I guess. It's just Lilib64. <laughs> it's just spelled awkwardly. <laughs> and we'll have that linked uh, in the show notes as well. Um, if this episode is released under a Creative Commons license, so if you want to use any part of it, feel free to. Uh, you know, clipping out any of our wonderful... <laughs> sections where we talked about traditional things um, just as long as you link back to the original page uh, if you want to discuss this episode with other listeners you can go to our subreddit at the Nexus TV nope <laughs> at nope? reddit.com slash r <laughs> slash the Nexus TV that's what it's called it's just automatic now and uh, yeah it's, it's you know there's quite a few things to talk about And uh, if you want to review something for us here on Second Opinion, we, uh, obviously, I can't buy every single laptop or phone or, you know, piece of software that comes out. So um, please get in touch with us if you would like to appear on the show and review something. Uh, And remember that no matter where you're listening, you should go and subscribe to Second Opinion Reviews in your favorite podcast player. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good one.